Hello, Gold viewers from around the world. Welcome to Gold Learning here. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold Learning. And here at Gold, we are preparing for our upcoming Gold Neonatal Online Conference of 2020. The conference is just around the corner here in a couple of weeks. We get started. And with me today is one of our speakers from the conference, Dr. Joanna Torres. Hello, Dr. Torres. Hi. <laughs> It's wonderful to have you here today. Thank you. So before we get started, tell our listeners, where in the world are you located? So uh, I'm uh, in Portugal. I'm Portuguese gastroenterologist and I work in the area of uh, Lisbon. It's beautiful there. I've been there myself. It's a gorgeous area there. So uh, tell it me, is. we are still in, uh, in the times of COVID-19. How did Portugal fare? Well, uh, Portugal didn't do as bad as uh, our neighbors, uh, mm -hmm. like Spain and Italy. So uh, the things were not so bad, the numbers uh, were not so uh, so dramatic, and we are um, slowly starting to reopen. Uh, you know, the society in general, and also in the hospitals, we are starting to try to catch up with everything that was stopped because we uh, in, reduced a lot uh, the medical activity. So we're trying to adapt to the new normal life. Mm -hmm. The new normal life. I'm glad to hear that you're slowly uh, in your area there. Things are, are getting a little better uh, there as well. So uh, you mentioned you're a gastroenterologist. Tell us a little bit about your background. You're also a, um, a professor, right? You're also teaching. So tell us a little bit about your uh, journey and your work. So uh, I, uh, you know, I made my medical uh, degree in uh, Coimbra, which is one of the oldest universities in Europe, actually. Wow. Uh, and then uh, I, I, uh, I, I decided to become a, a gastroenterologist. So I made my training also in Coimbra and eventually I ended up in uh, Lisbon for, you know, personal reasons. And during my uh, gastroenterologist uh, journey, I felt uh, a little passionate about uh, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. This is a topic I had great interest because uh, these are very, um, you know, young patients. It's a very complex disease. Mm -hmm. There is novel therapies as well. So there is a lot of things going on. And so because of this uh, interest I had in uh, IBD, I spent some time in France, uh, yeah. in Lille, because there was a big center there in IBD that uh, where uh, Professor Jean-Frédéric Colombel was working. And this led to the, an opportunity to go to the United States for research. So overall, I spent three years at Mount Sinai, New York, working in research. And I got very much involved uh, in research, trying to study what's happening before disease is diagnosed. So this is really the major interest of my research. So preclinical disease and early disease. So the concept being that if we act early on, potentially even before symptoms start, we can uh, prevent disease or completely change the natural history of disease. And one of these projects was actually trying to assess early life exposures in the setting of inflammatory bowel disease. So in people at risk for developing disease. And this got me, uh, you know, I got a lot of interest and I find this is a fascinating area where there's a lot of research going on not just in IBD but also in other uh, related diseases and uh, we are really uh, starting to learn really really many many things about early life you know and from early life of course yeah. is uh, you know one of the most important exposures in early life and is feeding and uh, right. this is why uh, uh, I will be speaking on breastfeeding in the setting of IBD and touching different aspects. Right. And I, I just wanted to say, and you mentioned that just now, that it must be exciting times for you as, as a, a gastroenterologist and also somebody uh, interested in breast milk, because we are learning so much now about the microbiome. Uh, first of all, about the gut flora and uh, microbes there that uh, kind of a lot of research just recently sprung up. Right. And then also about um, the uh, the components of breast milk there as well. So so has that changed? I mean, you know, that must be like amazing times to be in right now for you uh, seeing Absolutely. all that research and being involved in all that research it is uh, and it's like you say it's like a novel world because uh, um since the since the ability of scientists to sequence 
uh, microbes, the microbiome, but also other types of omics really starting to develop very fastly and we are being able to integrate all that data, we are really learning a lot of things. And I think the most, uh, for me, being also a physician, the, really the most uh, interesting is the perspective that by learning uh, what we are learning on breast milk composition, gut microbiome, etc., that potentially we can also implement uh, preventive measures. And we can actually use very simple measures to prevent uh, diseases. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, trying with simple things that we can try to promote and foster the development of an healthy microbiome uh, mm -hmm. in childhood. And uh, the concept is that this may help us to, um, you know, change uh, the history of, uh, you know, a right. person in, 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 may, may modulate the risk of developing disease. So this is very exciting times. I completely agree with you. Absolutely, absolutely. And your, uh, your uh, topic here, you mentioned it for the conference, breastfeeding and IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So tell us a little bit about it. I mean, you know, uh, number one, breast milk, that's always exciting, especially for our audience, right? Um, you know, that's that's really fascinating there. So, and, and preventative, uh, your preventative measures, I'm very interested in learning more about that. So tell us a little bit about what you will be talking about. So I will uh, be shortly discussing the topic of the inflammatory bowel disease, just for people to understand what disease I'm speaking and also the burden that this disease causes in the mm -hmm. patients that suffer from it. And then I will be discussing also shortly the changing epidemiology of IBD because this can help us to understand potentially, you know, what are the environmental drivers for disease because we are witnessing a very sharp increase in disease across the world. So this is no longer a disease of the, you know, of the modern countries. It's becoming really a global disease. And we, by looking at the changes in environment, we have an opportunity to try at least to understand why. And then, of course, because the topic is on breastfeeding, I will discuss, you know, the, the, the importance of breastfeeding. Why is breastfeeding beneficial? Why we think it may be beneficial as well through modulation of the microbiome? And what's the importance of early life microbiome in the development of the uh, immune system and how it can set really the immune system to modulate disease resistance or disease susceptibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll speak of some of my research in uh, children at risk for IBD development just based on their family history. And I'll in briefly touch upon that because I think, you know, we may learn also in the setting of IBD some, uh, some things through this research. And then I'll have a more clinical side to my talk as well because I think this is very important and this is for a more day-to-day -day basis where I will discuss um, what's the impact of IBD uh, in disease activity, whether I, uh, breastfeeding may or not protect from developing IBD. So for those women that are breastfeeding, you know, uh, or, you know, if the children has any risk factor, additional risk factor for IBD development, and uh, what's the safety of breastfeeding for moms with IBD uh, on specific medications. So I'll review all the safety data for the IBD medications, because I think this is very important also mm -hmm. for those women suffering IBD and having a child and uh, considering uh, breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So you mentioned, did I understand that correct, that you see a sharp increase in IBD cases uh, throughout the world? In, yes. In yeah. yeah, and this is, uh, so what, actually what we are seeing is that in very high incidence areas, the disease seems to be stabilizing, mm -hmm. except, except the very early onset IBD. So it's still rising in children. Uh, for reasons that we need to understand. And in other areas of the world where this used to be a very rare disease, such as Asia, um, mm -hmm. South America, India, we are witnessing a sharp increase in the incidence of disease. Interesting. This is what the epidemiological studies are telling us. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And breastfeeding comes into that. Uh, I, I'm very fascinated yeah. with that, how breastfeeding can play into that and and uh, what can be done. I uh, can also see, and you mentioned that briefly about the safety of breastfeeding, uh, how important that is, because, you know, we have, um, we're advocating for breastfeeding and, um, but then, uh, you know, uh, women or families who are impacted by IBD probably have a lot of questions. Is it safe to breastfeed? Is my milk any good with that disease? Will I give my disease to my children uh, through the milk, you know, all kinds of questions that, that are coming up uh, there as well. Yeah, so if I may comment, there is no evidence that uh, the disease may be transmitted through breast milk. So this is the first point, very important point. Mm -hmm. It's up to the decision of uh, every IBD woman to and every woman in general to breastfeed or not. We, I believe personally that we should try to promote breastfeeding as much as we can because we know it's beneficial in many ways through modulating immune system, et cetera. But also we know it's very important for, you know, vinculation between the baby and the mother. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, there are some drugs that the woman should not breastfeed while uh, mm -hmm. if they are on that drugs. But, you know, it's almost, uh, these are some antibiotics and some drugs that we even don't use so much anymore. So. Generally speaking, the message is very positive. It seems to be safe to breastfeed with uh, most of the IBD drugs, uh, with the biologics that are the most recent drugs that we don't have so much experience because they are, you know, they are starting to be used. It also seems to be very safe. Uh -huh. the, the, really, the drugs that we have uh, no data and uh, we are not advising are the small molecules, which are really the, the the newest drugs on the market. And until we know more about those, we need to be uh, we need to be cautious. Uh, but generally speaking, it's safe to breastfeed on uh, while on IBD. For of course, if a woman is feeling very sick after delivery, you know, this is not the usual, of course, but uh, if she's on, uh, you know, experience a flare, it may be difficult. So we should also be ready to support if she, you know, if she chooses right. not to breastfeed because of disease activity. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Before I let you go, what are you excited about coming up in the future? What do you see in your field uh, on research or, or uh, clinical studies, anything that you think will be coming your way or our way that you're excited about? So I'm very excited about all this idea of prediction and prevention in IBD. I think this is still a very long road ahead, yeah. uh, but this is something that I'm completely passionate about because I think we can learn a lot about disease and potentially even find new therapeutic targets. So I think this is really a way to go. And I think also in IBD, what I see coming in the next years, and it's coming very fast, is uh, personalization of therapy. Mm. So you are working a lot so that we can find the best therapy for each individual patient. While now we, we just really use a sequence of therapies uh, right. using, uh, you know, just clinical um, re uh, clinical factors that are not very, very precise, not very personalized. So there is a lot of uh, efforts going on also on this field. Wonderful. That sounds very exciting as well. Uh, Dr. Torres, thank you so much for sitting down with me here today and chatting about your work and the presentation here at Gold. It has been a pleasure being here with thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to our listeners, the presentation by Dr. Torres, Breastfeeding and IBD will be live on June 2nd and is part of the Gold Neonatal Online Conference. And uh, you can post questions or comments down below here as well. And we invite you to check out the conference and look at our website. You'll find out more about all the other presentations in the conference there as well. So go to goldneonatal.com. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.